We should address the latest developments in the Stepstones, my lords. Where, I wonder, is our Prince Damon? It was a decade ago, and he has since left the region undefended. We have left it undefended. My queen? Her father, compromised by the acts of her son. To have one child like that is a mistake. To have three is an insult. What are children but a weakness? Through them, you imagine you will persist forever. You will be our king. People have eyes. The consequences of an allegation like the one you toyed. We are the blood of old Valeria. But for them, you surrender what you should not. It would be dire. Dracardis! Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. They just released a House of the Dragon episode six trailer with a bunch of new footage, so we'll break it down. There's obviously a huge time jump. I believe it's about 10 years, so a bunch of stuff has happened since the events of episode five when we pick up in episode six. I'll explain what's going on. If you're brand new to the channel, I'm doing videos for all the episodes just like I did for the Game of Thrones series. Be sure to subscribe to get them. We're also doing a giveaway for HBO Max subscriptions, too. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and post your favorite moment from the new trailer on the video. Careful for spoilers from episode 5 if you haven't seen it yet, because obviously we have to talk about where they left things to talk about where they begin here. So like I said, about 10 years have gone by, a bunch of children have been born to both of the different sides, like Rhaenyra has a couple of children now, Alicent has a couple more children in addition to the ones that she already had. And probably one of the other biggest changes is now that they've switched to the older versions of the actresses. So now Rhaenyra is being played by Emma D'Arcy. She's wearing a similar gown that Rhaenyra had earlier in the timeline just to kind of ease the transition. Like, oh, she looks like she's wearing the same clothes. She kind of looks the same, but not really. And Allison is being played by Olivia Cook, now wearing green almost all the time. Even though she does wear different types of gowns, most of them are all green for the most part for the rest of her life. When her children are fighting with Rhaenyra's children, they also want to show you that Alicent's children also wear green like she does, and Rhaenyra's children are wearing red and black to denote the different sides in the Dance of the Dragons. It's foreshadowing at this point, like it hasn't actually started, but it's eventually spinning up really soon. We'll just start at the beginning of the trailer, though, and go through scene by scene. It starts with a scene of Daemon on Caraxes flying to Dragonstone. They mention him in a small council meeting with the older versions of the actresses, like both Allison and Rhaenyra are there, Viserys is there as well, but obviously he's gotten way worse since the events of episode 5. His hair's falling out, he looks like he's over 90 years old, even though he's still a middle-aged man, like he's still meant to be very young chronologically, it's just that his leprosy is slowly eating away at him. He has a form of leprosy, and that's really what's killing him. So it looks like he has a lot of trouble just getting around normally, like you see him sitting down a lot. The same people are on the small council, like Tylan Lannister, who's speaking here in the small council meeting, talking about the situation in the Stepstones, is still the master of ships. So even though Viserys formed the marriage pact between their houses and kind of made nice with House Valerian, Corlys Valerian hasn't come back to the small council. The whole idea here is that Daemon basically vacated the Stepstones, so now it's become a big problem. People from Essos are trying to take it again, and even though the Stepstones aren't part of Westeros, they don't want somebody from the East controlling it because it's such a big point of trade around the Seven Kingdoms. That was the whole reason why Corlys Valerian wanted to fight that war in the first place, because they were choking his trade. You can see the tensions between Alicent and Rhaenyra have cooled significantly. It's been 10 years, so obviously there's a lot of stuff that they skipped over. Like, things just gradually got worse and worse and worse. All the voiceover here in the trailer talking about children being the end of people, basically, this big metaphor, is coming from Alaris Strong, Lord of Tea, because he's the one that was spilling the rumors about Rhaenyra in episode 5, now he's spilling rumors about the father of her children in this trailer. The whole line, what are children but a weakness, is meant to highlight the idea that there are a bunch of new children born to both of these women later in the timeline. So Alicent has four children now, Rhaenyra has probably three, I think she's had her third child now. The person they show you in the trailer is a version of Aemond Targaryen trying to claim a dragon. His whole thing is that he wants a dragon for his own and he doesn't have one yet. The other dragon rider children all make fun of him for not having one. Then there's a scene with a teenage version of Aegon II, that's who this is, fighting with what seems like Rhaenyra's oldest child, who's Jacaris Valerian. Remember, they were using the Valerian name until one of their children potentially took the Iron Throne. Then they would take the Targaryen name. So the whole idea is that you have this drama between Rhaenyra and Allison's children happening in the yard. Like, this is just play, we're just practicing, but really they're kicking the crap out of each other. 
You notice that Harwin Strong is watching them, helping train them in the background, kind of making sure that things don't go off the rails, which obviously they do. We're talking about the Game of Thrones universe here. There is no scene that won't go off the rails. The voiceover line continues, through them, you believe that you'll persist forever. So the whole idea is you see Viserys, who's now kind of withering away, almost ready to die, looking down on the yard, watching them fight. Remember in episode five, his whole idea is that he's got all these grand plans for the future of the realm, the future of the Targaryen dynasty, but it all just goes to crap because of the Dance of the Dragons. That's like the big twist. In the trailer, you're hearing this voiceover. You imagine that you'll persist forever, but you're waiting for the but in that sentence. Like, what is the other thing? When do things go off the rails between all these different people inside the house of Targaryen? This new scene is a much older version of Lena Targaryen, who was, remember, suggesting marriage with Daemon. She's been married to Daemon in that 10-year time jump, and the two children that she has right now are with him, Bela Targaryen and Rhaena Targaryen. It looks like in this scene, she's pregnant with her third child. There's a scene of them getting ready to hatch a dragon egg, which seems like it might be connected to Jacaris getting ready to claim his dragon, Vermax. Then we get the voiceover from Alicent talking to Aegon II, telling him that he will be their king. Pretty much all the children that are born to these three different families, like obviously talking about Daemon as well with Lena Targaryen, all the children born to their families are dragon riders, so they all do eventually get dragons. Lena Targaryen starts talking to Daemon about how they're the blood of old Valyria because she comes from House Valerian. They're also from ancient Valyria, just like the Targaryens are, and they're both riding their dragons here. And we finally see Lena Targaryen flying her dragon, Vagar, and she's actually been riding it for a long time now. They even kind of cut that out of episode five. I was kind of disappointed about that. But you get an idea for the scale here. Like, this is a chart to show you how much bigger Vagar is than the other dragons. That's because she's a much older dragon than the others, and they just continually get bigger and bigger and bigger. You remember way back in the early episodes when the very, very young version of Lena kept asking Viserys all about Vagar. Where is Vagar? They keep talking about her. She's too big to fit in the dragon pit. They mentioned Vagar again in another episode after that. They just went to set up the idea that she is eventually the next person to claim Vagar. She's not the last person to ride Vagar. The whole idea is that dragons live for a couple hundred years naturally, unless something happens to them, like somebody comes along and kills them, or another dragon comes along and kills them. So one dragon might have several different dragon riders throughout the dragon's lifetime. For instance, Balerion the Black Dread had many dragon riders. Viserys was like the last person to ride Balerion before he died. He only rode him once, right before he died of natural causes. But he was about 200 years old when that happened. The baby that Rhaenyra is holding might be a version of her third son, Joffrey Valerion. They name him Joffrey in honor of Laner's old lover, Joffrey Lonmouth. Then when the voiceover talks about a father being compromised by the actions of his son, they show you footage of Lionel Strong and Harwin Strong, his son, and footage of Harwin Strong fighting with Kristen Cole in the yard during this fight that the kids were having between the two of them. And you hear Allison complaining to Viserys about Rhaenyra's children. And it sounds like she's yelling about Rhaenyra sleeping around, breaking the rules, quote unquote, because around court, it's a bit of an open rumor, like everybody around court is whispering, spilling the tea about her having lovers. So everyone around court believes that the father of Rhaenyra's children is really Harwin Strong. And the members of court call them the Strong Boys. Because all three of her children are born with the brown hair instead of the Targaryen silver blonde color like all of Allison's children do. Like this is after her third child is born, like she's holding that baby. He also has brown hair too. So that's when Allison is like, enough is enough. I believe at some point during the season and later episodes, they will eventually answer that rumor, but until they officially answer it, there'll just be a lot of suggestion about who the real father of her children are. But the big idea during episode five is that you see Harwin Strong rescue Rhaenyra earlier in the timeline. The whole idea is that he's kind of replaced Kristen Cole as Rhaenyra's protector. Also kind of seems like replaced Kristen Cole as her lover as well too. You hear Jacaris yell Dracaris and tell Vermax to breathe fire. He breathes it on this goat here. It kind of reminds you of Drogon during, I think it was Game of Thrones season four when he killed that goat. You also see Larys Strong during all these scenes. So it sounds like he isn't helping with all the rumors about what's going on with Rhaenyra's children. But that does sound like it's going to be a big thing heading into the future of the episodes. And the whole idea that Allison really, really wants to push Aegon II as the heir because of what Rhaenyra is doing. Like, they're not really Targaryens. They're not really a member of this marriage. They're secretly her bastards. They shouldn't be on the Iron Throne. You can imagine all the ways that Alicent would try to use this against Rhaenyra. In total, Alicent has four children now with Viserys. Aegon II, the oldest. Helena, who doesn't feature in this trailer anywhere, but she's obviously quite a bit older. She's the only girl. There's Aemond Targaryen, like I said, this kid here. And then Alicent's other youngest child is called Darren Targaryen. He's not featured in the trailer either. I don't know if they're going to feature him in season one. 
But the whole idea is that her next couple of children are born in rapid succession. So like she has one right after the other as soon as possible almost. So like right after the events of episode five, she gets pregnant again, eventually gives birth to Aemon Targaryen. And then right after that gets pregnant again, gives birth to Darren Targaryen. Rhaenyra's three children are also born right after the events of episode five in rapid succession, pretty much too, pretty much same deal. Her son Jacaris is born about a year after the events of this wedding, so like they can kind of pass him off as Laner's son. Like, oh, see, we got married and then we had a child, but the timing is kind of suspect and there's the whole hair color thing. So most of the people in court do not actually believe that Laner is his father. Then about a year after that, this other son Lucerus is born to her. Then a couple years after Lucerus, Joffrey is born. So like there is a couple years time gap between Lucerus and Joffrey. Damon's two girls with Lena Valerian are also pretty close to the same age as Rhaenyra's first two children. They're like a little bit younger, but pretty close to the same age. Like I said, all of them are dragon riders. So anytime you see one of them walking around with a dragon egg or near a dragon egg, that's part of their traditions. So because they'll become a dragon rider, they want to put a dragon egg in their bassinet. They want the children around dragon eggs and dragons as much as possible. Because of the way they're jumping through the timeline, I don't know if we'll see all these kids eventually riding dragons by the end of season one. They might wait till season two and other future time jumps for that. But like I said, they all do eventually wind up riding dragons. That's why there are so many dragons by season two. There'll be about 17 total. I think they're only supposed to be nine during season one. The little baby sized Vermax here is just like the next newest one that they've shown you in the trailers. But like teenage Aegon II here, for instance, has already claimed a dragon. His name is Sunfire, but he's not featured in the trailer. Alicent's second child, Helena, the girl, has also claimed another dragon. Her name is Dreamfire. Hopefully we'll see them in episode six, but at least by the end of the season, we'll probably see a couple more of these other ones. But if you spotted any other Easter eggs in the trailer footage that I didn't talk about in the video, just write it below in the comments. In my full episode six video, we'll post next week after they release it. I'll name a new giveaway winner the next time I post a House of the Dragon bonus video too. Make sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. Everyone click here for my full House of the Dragon episode 5 video and click here for all my other House of the Dragon videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.